Hi there! So we are live again and we are here for another 15 minutes of drawing fun. Today I want to use my colored pencils and um, actually I want to uh, do, show you a little bit, a little trick. Is it a trick? Maybe it's a trick uh, or a technique that helps you to um, draw stuff around the house. Um, I've been doing a lot of drawings um, with, um, well, of, of my living room and I have uh, gotten quite some comments on the stuff that I've posted on my Instagram of people saying, how do you even do that? Draw the whole scene like that, where do you start? Well, I have done Draw Tip Tuesdays about that, so um, if you want to learn more about that, then check out Sketchbook School's YouTube and find uh, how to start a drawing or something similar in the Draw Tip Tuesday playlist. Um, but now, don't go anywhere, stay here, grab your colored pencils and we will draw. So I hope you are sitting comfortably and that you have something to draw, something to see uh, in front of you. And um, let's do that. Draw a corner of your living room or your home office of anything like that and make sure that you put something big in the foreground. I will give you an example. I will show you what I will be using today. So I have these beautiful pink flowers and those will be my foreground while I will be drawing that. The chair and um, again my shoes <laughs> and you can see my backpack and something behind the door there. I don't even know what that is. But actually by drawing this first I will create a lot of depth in my drawing and also I will have kind of a frame that will help me to get the, all that in proportion and to get all that in perspective. So this is a super, super awesome bonus tip video. Look at this again, but um, get your own um, uh, uh, scene to draw. So maybe it is right in front of you. Maybe it is um, your mug of coffee uh, that is in the foreground for you for your drawing. Or maybe it's a plant. Um, don't go too wild. Just find something to put in the foreground to practice this with. And uh, kind of just follow my lead, I guess. Okay, so I will be drawing um, with colored pencils. I found a few colors that will definitely work for me for my scene. And um, I'll try to keep it all here. I am casting shadow on my drawing because I have um, swapped my space so I could actually show you that or use that view and show you how to use your foreground in order to draw the background in a simpler way. All right, so what I will start doing is I will start drawing that flower. So actually, no, what I will start doing is not just the flower, but I'm going to look at the edge of my table with the vase on it. I'll draw that and then from there on I'll draw the flower and I'll draw the rest. All right, I'll just use this pink one just because it's fun. <laughs> and uh, this is the edge of my table. I will turn off the comments before I forget. I hope then you can all see. And um, there we go. That is the vase. And I'll just draw the vase so I have a start. There we go. That's a great start. And I'll grab some green. 
I'm just really not looking at the background at all. I'm just really focusing on the foreground, but I don't really need to go into a lot of detail because that is not really what this is all about. So, and maybe I don't even draw the rest of the flowers. There's five of them, but um, I want to focus on this part. So that's what I'll be doing. And um, I'll just quickly draw the petal petals the way I kind of see them. Kind of all over the place, which I kind of like. And um, there's the other one. And I'm not worrying about it being very accurate. It's just that I can use these shapes to fill in the background. So now I have a fantastic frame actually to um, start drawing the rest. So um, what really helps too now is close one eye because then you filter out depth and you can actually really focus on what is where um, according to your foreground, if that makes sense. So um, what I can see is that actually the leg of the chair is touching the edge of my table and I'm looking at the negative space as well. I hope this is not too technical, but um, well, if it is, then um, I'm sorry about that. This is just a free lesson. <laughs> and here's the, I think it's around here the other leg and then I'm going to draw the color of the chair with the color of this pencil and now this peeps right in between those two flowers and that's just perfect and of course you might be wondering but what if I draw my foreground wonky? Won't then everything else be wonky? Yes, it certainly will. And you will see that um, my drawing will be very wonky <laughs> too. But at least everything, the wonkiness is in proportion. So um, then suddenly it all makes sense, or at least a little. And if it doesn't, then at least you have been enjoying a little bit of time solving a puzzle because this is really what it feels like to me um, trying to find those um, milestones those uh, places where certain shapes meet each other again and uh, by adding all that up um, you are making your drawing I'm actually going to color this like this a little bit of color two green cushions or pillows what's I don't know, even know the word for this I think it's pillows a little bit of shadow color in this chair too. Let's do a little bit of bold coloring. That's why colored pencils are so much fun because you can get really bold and you can get real bright colors. And I'm using all kinds of brands of colored pencils. This is hard. <laughs> this is really hard. It's a little bit tricky. Um, yeah, if you would ask me what, what brands are you using right now, I have no idea. I know I have a Karen Dash um, pencil in my hand, but the other ones, I don't know. Let's take a look. Polychromos, um, my Faber Castell. But I use basically everything that feels a little bit right. And um, that goes for everybody. There is no magic pen, there's no magic pencil. Whatever works for you is the best tool. And of course you should um, experiment, not, not just stick to the same tool or the same subject every time, but um, if something's good, it's good. 
and um, then you can you know go and find other stuff that might be better but if it works for you why would you okay so uh, as you can see I did not think about the um, perspective at all I was just looking at these negative spaces here. I was looking at the the angle I am seeing this in, and that's why it's really helpful to close one eye because then you can see like, oh, this goes upwards a little bit, so I'll just follow that shape. And if you keep an eye on that negative space here, then you can get those proportions fairly, fairly right. Um, so, what I can see next, I'm just drawing a shape and one next to it and one next to it and one next to it. That is basically what drawing is. So I can see my backpack over there and I'm just going to add a quick line drawing. I don't need to color that whole black thing in. It will become more like a black blob than um, an indication of a bag being there. Oh, here I am going completely wrong because there's actually something sticking out here. And then there's a bit over here. And then I can see my shoes. I'll draw that with a different color again. Try and see if I can get those shoes in um, in the right proportion. And again, I'm looking at where is that part of the um, of the backpack, and where is that in proportion to my shoe? So I actually drew my shoe too tall, too long, but that's okay. I'll just go with it. There's two shoes over here. I'll just quickly fill in a few details. I like how I am now zooming out of that zo zoomed in drawing of yesterday. Full circle. <laughs> okay. No need to go into detail too much. Um, I really did make this way too large. I put this in proportion. Now I see that this comes only, the, the, um, the top of the backpack comes only around here, if I look again. So yes. As I um, already said, it will be wonky and there will be things that are out of perspective, but that's all fine. I'll just give this a little bit of texture. Hopefully that makes the shoes stand out a little bit more. And let's not fiddle around too much with it. Okay. Um, and then there's, um, I can see the edge of the floor. This is where the wall is, this is where the floor is. And there's also, I can hardly see it because it's partly behind the flowers, but that is the corner of the room. And then it goes right here. No, actually, I can see it here. Wow, again, close one eye, look at the angles, and then you see that this is actually really crazy angle hard to believe but this is really how it is okay um i just really want to add this because as i have said before everything is better in pink <laughs> okay um that was a really quick lesson on using your foreground to create depth and to also keep an eye on proportion. Now, um, please let me know if this is helpful at all. Uh, let me move back to the other view. So this is my drawing and this kind of was my view. And um, this is me. Let me know if this was helpful at all. Um, let me know what you made. Please share with the hashtag SBS Drawing Party so we can find your art, we can look at it and we can um, applause it and 
We can all say ooh and ah if you follow the hashtag SBS Drawing Party, you will be amazed by everything that you see uh, that people are making. Thank you so much for uh, joining me again. This was a pretty quick one, but a fun one. Grab your colors, close one eye, look at all the proportions, keep an eye on the negative spaces and draw what you see. Use your foreground to draw your background. And I'll see you tomorrow again, same time, same place, for another drawing. Have a great day. Bye.